I'm in the middle of Wales and I'm somewhere in the Cambrian Mountains. I'm not sure exactly where I am, but that's the point of this video. I'm going to use this to find my position. It's called a sextant. I'm going to use this to measure the position of the sun in the sky and from that work out where I am. So how does this centuries old invention let me find my position? Let's find out. OK, before I get set up, I'm going to find a place to sit down. I can see a couple of cairns behind me in the distance. There must be some kind of summit there. That'll give me a place to sit down, something to lean back against. OK, let's head on up there. Let me show you where the Cambrian Mountains are. Let's zoom into Wales and then into the spot I've chosen to make this video. From my home in Hereford, this was the quickest remote place I could get to. The area I'm in is a plateau about 2,000 feet up. As well as being a beautiful place for a walk, its emptiness meant I really wasn't sure of my exact location. After a two hour walk from my car, I arrived at possibly the largest cairn I've ever seen. Apologies for the audio coming up, it was a bit breezy up there and you'll hear a bit of wind noise. Well, this looks like a lovely spot absolutely beautiful so I've set myself up here and this is where I'm going to use my sextant to take the noon sight but why have I come out here to use this sextant anyway I bought this a few years on eBay it was a cheap ornament and it's the kind of nerdy device that I buy I bought it and it's been sitting on a shelf for several years and I've never actually used it and I've always been curious to see how well this could give me my position the thing is, this isn't a real sextant. It's actually a cheap ornament. It cost me, I think, 15 pounds. That's $20. It's sold as an ornament. There was even a warning on the eBay listing saying, warning for ornamental use only, not to be used for actual navigation. But it is still a sextant. And I've always wondered if I were to be out somewhere, not know my position and use this, is it gonna get me anywhere close? So today's the day. I've got as remote as I can get this side of driving up to Scotland. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see how good or perhaps how bad a position this thing's going to give me. So how does this work? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll try and explain how this works in under a minute. So let's throw 60 seconds on the clock. Here goes. The sun is always shining directly down on some part of the Earth at any given time. It changes with the seasons. The Earth tilts the northern hemisphere towards the sun and then the southern hemisphere. Today's the 3rd of April and the northern hemisphere is tilted five and a third degrees towards the sun. This means that if I was standing down on a latitude five and a third degrees north of the equator, then at some point today, the sun would pass directly overhead. So anyone who sees the sun go overhead today knows they're at five and a third degrees north. But if the sun doesn't go overhead, it means I'm not on that line. And the further away from the vertical the sun is, the further north of that line I am. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait until the middle of the day when the sun gets to the highest point in the sky and I'm gonna measure how high above the horizon it is. From that, I can work out how far away from the vertical it is, just subtract the height from 90, I get the angle from the vertical, and I am that far north of five and a third degrees north. That's the theory. That gives me my latitude. What I'm also going to do is I'm gonna find out the exact time that the sun reaches its zenith, and I can use that to work out its longitude. At 12.03 at and 20 seconds today, the sun will pass over the prime meridian, zero degrees longitude. I'm gonna see what time the sun gets to the highest point for me, and the later it is, the further west of that line I am. It's about 40 minutes, I think, until the sun's gonna to get to its highest point. But I'm gonna take a reading now. I'll explain why later. So I'm gonna point this towards the sun, get the angle of the sun above the horizon, but first, there's a problem. There is no horizon. I'm in the middle of a mountain range here and I'm surrounded by mountains and valleys and there is no flat horizon to use. 
if I was a navigator on a ship at sea, this wouldn't be a problem, of course, I'd have a nice flat horizon. Luckily, there's a solution to this problem. Let me pour myself a coffee. Okay, here we go. One stone cold instant coffee. But that's okay, because this coffee isn't for me to drink. This is gonna serve as an artificial horizon. Instead of measuring the height of the sun above a non-existent horizon, I'm gonna measure the angle between the sun and its own reflection on the surface of this coffee. Of course, the surface of a liquid is always gonna be flat and level. I can get the angle between the two, half it, and that will give me the sun's height above the horizontal. That's the theory. Okay, my coffee's all set up. I can see the sun reflected in it, so I'm ready to take my first reading. I'm gonna measure the angle between the reflection of the sun and the actual sun. Note the angle on this, and just as importantly, I'm gonna note the exact time that I took the reading. Anyway, let's go. So how does a sextant work anyway? You look through a magnifying scope at a semi-transparent mirror. You can see through this and look at the horizon, but this horizon mirror also reflects upwards to another mirror which can be moved. By adjusting the angle of this so-called index mirror, you can see the horizon and the sun at the same time. Of course, I'm not using the horizon, I'm doing the coffee cup trick. So I'll aim down to the cup and place the sun directly on top of its own reflection. Then, read the angle off the scale. Okay, I took my reading at 11, 33 and 30 seconds. And the reading is... The reading was 85.1 degrees, so let's make a note of that along with the exact time I took the measurement. Okay, now I've just got to wait 30 minutes until the sun should reach its zenith. And at that point, I'm going to get its maximum height. Then we'll be able to work out a longitude. A latitude, rather. The longitude will come later. So I kept watching the sun and measuring its height until it stopped getting any higher. Okay, I've just taken what I think is my midday zenith reading. The time is 12, 18 and 40 seconds. Let's just read the angle off this, see what I got to. The angle I read was 87.1 degrees, so let's note that down along with the time. We now have the zenith reading. So, the highest I saw the sun get in the sky was 87.1 degrees. That's the angle between the sun and its own reflection in the coffee. We'll half that. We get 43.55 degrees. We'll take that away from 90 to get our angle from the vertical. And I make that 46.45 degrees. And now we'll add on the five and a third degrees, which is the sun's latitude north. And I get a latitude of 50 1.78 degrees. So how close is that to my real location? I'm going to use my phone, fire up the GPS app, get a real latitude and longitude, and then we can see how well we're doing so far. Let's plot my real position on a map so we can see how accurate my measurement was. So how close is my latitude? Not very. I was out by 0.43 of a degree, which is over 25 miles too far south. Now we need to work out the longitude. To work out my longitude, I need to know the exact time that the sun got to the zenith. And that's not that easy. As the sun moves across the sky, it climbs, gets higher and higher. When it gets towards the top, though, it moves kind of horizontally. So it's quite difficult to see when it gets to its highest point. So one, what I'm going to do, remember that reading I took on the way up? I'm going to wait for it to start to come down again, get back down to that height, and see what time the sun is at the same height as it was when it was coming up. 
and half the time between them and that should give me the exact time that the sun hit its zenith. I've been watching the sun descending and it's now got down to the point where it's at the same height above the horizontal as when I took my first measurement. So the time, I'm just going to write this down. 13.02 and 50 seconds. It got to the same height on the way up at 11.33 and 30 seconds. So I've got to calculate the midpoint between these two times. The midpoint was 12.18 and 10 seconds. So let's replace our previous rough estimate with this more accurate one. The sun passed over the Greenwich Meridian at 12.03 and 20 seconds. It got to its zenith here. Let's work this out. 15, 14 minutes and 50 seconds later. For every four minutes late, we're a degree west. So let's see if we can work this out. We are at least three degrees, 3.7 degrees west. Now, as we've seen, my actual location that I measured on the GPS is 3.66 degrees west. So this, this measurement was actually really accurate. This surprises me. It's normally easier to get a latitude than it is to get a longitude. Well, my latitude was way off, but my longitude was very close, in fact. I'm actually quite pleased with that. So, there we are. I've come up here to see how accurate this little ornamental sextant is. Not very, is the answer to that. But that was part of the objective. I've had this sitting on the shelf for ages. I've been very curious to find out how usable it is, and now I've found out. So, what can you use the sextants for that's 20 odd miles out? Well, I can think of some situations. Suppose you're crossing an ocean. If I was sailing across the Pacific to Hawaii, for example, could I use a sextant that would put me out by 20 miles? Yeah, I think so. That would get me close enough to Hawaii to be able to see the island. But what if I was crossing a desert looking for an oasis? Would I really want to rely on a sextant that was that inaccurate? I don't think so. That would be the difference between life and death. I was actually hoping for a little bit better than this, if I'm honest. I know it's a cheap ornament and I knew I wasn't going to get a really accurate location, but I was hoping it would be a bit more accurate than what I've actually got. But anyway, it is what it is. The objective of coming up here was to find out whether this can give me a decent location. No, it can't is the answer to that, but still, now I know. But now I'm curious, what if I repeated this exercise with a decent sextant? I see second-hand professional sextants on eBay for, well, some of them are up to a thousand pounds. And in the hands of a decent operator, these things could technically give me my location to within a mile or so. So, who knows, maybe I'll make a follow-on video to this where I get a decent sextant, come up here and repeat the experiment. But anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.